Hey there, ladies and gentlemen. Horst here again. <coughs> I have another replay for you guys. It's a pretty cool game between me and a guy named Hoska. This is actually from one of those OBS games that you find on the on the uh, custom games. But I checked afterwards. He is a 3500 Master Zerg, so he is fairly highly ranked. I thought this is one of the cooler games I've played in a long time because it doesn't really use Colossus until very late game. I mean, I have like four bases up before I even think about getting Colossus, so it was a little unusual in that regard, but it turned out pretty well. Worked very well against this guy, and it worked very well against a lot of people. I beat uh, a lot of players using the same strategy. So, we'll see how it pans out, and we'll talk about the decision-making process as I go through this game. Unfortunately, because it is one of these fancy ob games, uh, all of the little production tab things are screwed up. So we can't be using those, it's going to be pretty blind, but I will do my best to keep you in the loop anyway. You'll see how that works out, hopefully good. But yeah, we start off with throwing down a gateway, like normal. And we scout him, and see he's doing something normal-ish, I don't know, he's going hatch first. Because he doesn't have his uh, gas or anything yet, he's at 15, so it's a hatch first build. And we see him doing it. It's like, oh, big mistake. Hatch first is bad. So what we're going to do to punish that is immediately cancel our gateway, throw up a forge instead, and do ourselves a little can rushing. Because God knows can rushing is a legit strategy. I've seen Huck do things like that all the time. He'll usually put the cannon in a place like this or something, though. I don't know. I like to do the good old-fashioned ramp block with cannon pretty lame, but you know what? It works. So, whatever. And the timing on this works out okay, because the forge will finish pretty much the same time as the pylons finish. So I'll be able to get down a couple of cans at the base of the ramp here, block this hatchery from going off, and I'll be able to expand safely myself, because he will be contained in his base for a good while. Granted, you could probably foregate after this as well, but that seems a little all-in-ish. There's no reason all-in when you have an advantage like this. Just take it and run with it. So he will, of course, be forced to cancel this hatchery. Waiting until the last minute, he wants to make sure that cannon finishes. Which is kind of silly of him, because of course the cannon is going to finish. I have to protect those pylons somehow. They're a bit of an expensive investment to allow him to just kill it with a drone or two. Or a couple of zerglings. So we'll have to uh, let the cannon finish. We will expand as soon as we are able. And you got to be on the lookout for this drone. He's probably going to expand to one of these three locations. We'll have to uh, send another probe out and cannon rush that as well, just in case. Just keep the cannon rush pressure up. But now that we have our Nexus down, we can go for a standard-ish kind of build, as though you went for a forge first fast expand, which is a lot of, to a lot of people, a pretty normal build. So we'll throw down a gateway, maybe a cannon or two at the front, normal things. And, we're, of course, we're going to scout to just check to see what we can see there. Nothing too much yet. If you look at what I can see, I just have vision to his front, and I'm going to be checking all of these little expansions with a rallied waypoint. And I'm going to keep going all the way over to every expansion. Just be on the safe side. I don't want him to have, like, a proxy gate or a proxy hatch or something way over the hell over here. Be able to catch me off guard. So we'll have to uh, check that. We have our gateway going down, we'll have gas going down at the same time so I can get a cyber core, and once the cyber core finishes, immediately start researching that warp gate ability, because I want to do a six gate after this. Now he is sneaky, and after I scouted, he throws down a hatchery, I probably should recheck that. Unfortunately, I don't really have time at this point, after this probe completes its round, this hatchery is going to be done pretty much. So I'm going to have to put this on busy so I don't get notifications or anything like that. But yeah, the hatch is going to finish. He's going to bust his way out with a roach or two, and he will actually be in a fairly decent position, because he'll have his two expansions up. Once he gets this down, he'll expand to here, most likely, unless he goes for a roach all-in, but I'll be able to hold a roach all-in, so not that big a deal. Now, I know he's coming with the roaches, so I'm going to have to throw down a couple more cans to defend. Just, uh, two or three more should do it, usually, unless he goes for very heavy roach numbers. So right now, I only see like one or two roaches to snipe my cannon. So, he's going to have to get more roaches to bum rush the cannon. And he has plenty right there with uh, seven of them. 
and that cannon will go down in short order without actually killing any of the roaches. But it did its job. It held them back long enough for me to get a fast expand safely up. I have a core up. I can get stalkers. I can get uh, sentries up. It's not a problem. So I'll throw down six more gateways or four, five more gateways to make a six gate. My favorite opener of late it does very well against all builds because it is awesome. I mean, the six gate is probably one of the most versatile openings you can do. If he does mutas, it outright kills him. If he does three expand or something, it usually outright kills him. Unless you start with a cannon rush and do some weird crap. If he goes for that uh, fancy new ling bling crap that everyone loves so much, it does a very good job killing that as well really early on. It's pretty powerful in all respects. The only thing it's pretty weak against is mass roach early, which is becoming less and less popular. Now this mass roach attack here isn't really too bad, but I will have to pull all my probes because he's going to just chill behind here and try to snipe them as they mine. So we'll pull all the probes until we get warp gates up. Once we get a couple of stalkers in, we can drive these out. Now he can't really push in too far because if he does, he'll attack these cannons. Those cannons will kill those roaches in a straight up fight with the aid of a stalker and a sentry. I mean, he did bust through these cannons over here, but in doing so, he took a lot of damage. So those are some pretty weakened roaches in there. These two cannons and the stalker would be able to finish that pretty handily. So he'll just have to poke around the backside of him. Again, if he gets too close, like over here, these cannons will eat him, so he wants to avoid that at all possible. And there, four stalkers is enough to drive these back. I mean, in a straight-up fight, roaches will beat stalkers. But you can just micro the damage stalkers back or generate shields. Stalkers are much faster with a longer range. So against slow roaches off creep, you can pretty much kill twice the number of uh, roaches with stalkers. It's really good. When they're uh, speed roaches and they're on creep, you do not want to engage that. It's freaking brutal. Roaches annihilate stalkers. Uh, regular speed roaches annihilate stalkers. But uh, he does not have speed yet. He is researching it though. But we'll have to just push through here. And at this point, all most of these roaches are going to die because stalkers are so fast compared to them. I'll be able to catch them off the creep like this and just mow them down. So we'll take our time and kill them all. We have our six gates up. Get plus one weapons. Try to put some pressure on with these stalkers. And these two zealots. I'm warping in a pile on up here on the high ground so I can put in a bunch of units down here. Relatively short reinforced distance. And it's not a proxy pile on the low ground so he doesn't know how to snipe it. So he, I mean, if you put a pylon like right here and he snipes it, then your attack is over because that's your uh, reinforcement point. And without reinforcements, your rush will not work. That's the whole point of the stick skate. Now, he is going for the one thing that's pretty good against this, the roaches. He has a couple of uh, star, uh, overlords just lying loose around. We'll try to kill them. But uh, he has speed roaches now. I think this number of speed roaches can easily handle this number of stalkers. I'm going to have to try to fall back. These zealots are going to die. Hopefully, the sentry will get away. Probably not, though. Try to buy time with a zealot. Doesn't work. Yeah, the sentry's going down. But I have enough stalkers here now to hold this number of roaches. Again, if stalkers are in equal number to roaches, they actually do beat them. But because they cost twice as much, you usually don't have equal numbers of them. However, towards max supply, when you're both supply capped because roaches are to supply as well as stalkers, a maxed army of stalkers will beat a maxed army of roaches, especially if you have blink and you can micro a little. So as you approach supply cap using a heavy gateway army, you do pretty well. But I'm going for a twilight council here because I have so many stalkers, blink would be really powerful, and we're going for a mass blink stalker play just to uh, go around, dart in and out, snipe expansions, things like that. And here we're going to go over here and try to take out his bases down here. We see some stray overlords. We'll gladly take them. I think he was moving around the map to scout with, but we'll take them. Any little advantage we can get. Killing overlords is always a good thing if they're free like that. Now his defenses up here at this expansion aren't very good. He does cancel this hatchery knowing I'm coming. He doesn't have many roaches, he's been focusing too heavily on droning up, which is a good idea because uh, he doesn't see I have Colossus, so he assumes I'm not going to push without Colossus. Most Zerg do the same. They don't understand that you can just build gateway units and actually do pretty well. So we'll just uh, mow right through this force, damage uh, micro-backs and damage stalkers occasionally. 
Or we'll just mow through with attack move. That works just as well. We don't actually have a reinforcement point anywhere near here, so it's not going to be easy to reinforce this push, but he does have a fair amount of roaches hatching down, down here. A couple overlords, though. He was supply cap. And we'll try to snipe this hatchery before we can get reinforcements in significant numbers. And we'll have these stalkers up here to waylay a couple of his reinforcements, keep them busy, keep them off my forces down here so I can kill the hatchery. And once we get a couple of roaches up there, we'll fall back. We did divert his attention away from the hatchery, though, so we'll be able to focus fire it down without too much difficulty. I will lose a couple of stalkers, but now we can try to run. Blink is just about finished, so I'll be able to get most of these stalkers out of there. I'll lose maybe one or two more. And Blink is done. So now I'll be able to blink away. And there it goes. So now I did put us on a pretty even footing. Of course, he's double expanding to make up for that. I am taking my third base. So it's going to be three base against two base Zerg until these hatcheries get up. But three base Protoss is pretty evenly matched against four base Zerg. It's the uh, three base Zerg against two base Protoss that Zerg's favor. Once the Protoss gets his third base up, it's very hard for the Zerg to stop you. That's generally true if the Protoss is going for the Colossus traditional bullcrap. When you're going for a mass stalker play because it's so fragile, uh, equal base Zerg is pretty good. You have to do your best to snipe those additional bases, though. You don't really want them getting in there, so of course we always have to keep the stalkers on the move. You can't sit them in your base. You can't let them mass. You can't let the Zerg breathe. You gotta keep the pressure up. You gotta keep attacking the whole game. Because I've been so good at pressuring him, he does have about equal supply with me, which is pretty good considering that uh, stalkers are very expensive. But he's going to attack me here with mass speedlings, which are really good against blink stalkers. I'll try to blink back a couple of them, but we're not going to be able to micro against this to any defective degree, so we're just going to have to run, run for it. Warping a couple of zealots down in the low ground here. Zealots, of course, great against speedlings. We'll try to fall back. Blink onto the high ground while the zealots deal with the low ground kind of crap. Just defend this. We are in trouble though right now, make no mistake, Roach, Roaches and Speedlings are very good against Stalkers and Zealots. Of course he makes it into my third, takes out about 16 probes, not good. I do have Dark Templar though, finally warping in, we'll be able to clean this up with Dark Templars and Stalkers. Because Stalkers DPS is kind of limited, we need a high DPS unit to complement them. That's usually Colossus in most cases, but it can be Dark Templar. One of the advantages of using Dark Templar with Blink Stalkers is you can easily snipe Overseers if he brings them with his army. You can also send them to bases and attack things. I'm actually using them to supplement my main army here. I actually expect him to have Spore Crawlers and Spine Crawlers every base after I reveal the DTs there. He does not actually, which is a blunder on his part, but I assume he would, so it's my mistake. I should have just checked. But after any huge battle like that, it's always a really good idea to uh, take another expansion. Any battle you win decisively. I mean, he did it some damage here, killing some probes, but you got to transfer over probes from your other ba uh, bases so you have even saturation at all. You don't want to have one base with 30 probes and one base with two probes. You want to have two bases with 16 probes. That's the best way to do it. So we'll just move out here, and again, we'll try to kill some of these bases off. Mass Zergling, Dark Templar shine against that because they one-shot Zerglings. They also form an invisible wall so he can't attack me. Pretty cool. He is morphing a bunch of Overseers though. We'll have to uh, snipe them if we want to have a chance. But, again, I'm just going to focus on staying ahead of the Zerg in bases. Just snipe a base and fade. My army is very fast, very mobile, very stealthy, but kind of small. Though I am maintaining a supply advantage. Some of that is in Harvesters. I am up by six. And we'll just fade back after killing a hatchery. Throw up some cannons for defense. And we will start getting more probes. Again, you want to have around 70, 80 probes-ish. You don't really want to stop at 67. You want to have 70 or 80. Magic number. We'll just transfer over more of them. Now, this is way oversaturated at my expansion here. I should probably have some of them here. This is a mistake on my part. But I am starting to uh, tech swap to Colossus. Because I know all game I've been going Dark Templar Blink Stalker. I know he has been going Mass Roach all game. I haven't seen a single sign of a Spire. And what reason does he have to make a Spire? I mean, I'm just using, using uh, Blink Stalkers. Here, we were trying to sneak in with the DTs when he attacked. So we'll try to pull back. The DTs from one side, the uh, stalkers from the other. Unfortunately, these 
Overseers have a large detection range, and he does manage to spot all of the Dark Templar and kill them all without them doing enough damage to really justify the cost. This is an interesting play here. He's dropping a bunch of changelings. I think the reason he's doing this is to confuse me and make my numbers a little unclear. Like, I can't really tell how strong my army is because a lot of it looks like... A lot of his looks like mine, so I think I have, like, six more zealots than I actually do. That might be what he's trying to do. But once the, uh... Zerglings all die. Stalkers are very effective against roaches in high numbers, so you just can kill them all. This was a, probably a bad idea to blink in. I do not have the advantage like I thought I did. I will have to pull back now when all these roaches start to overwhelm me. And fortunately, I do have a couple of cannons up for defense to buy me some time so I can loop around, reinforce, warp in some more units, and uh, hopefully get into a position to deal with this attack. It's a pretty scary attack when you have nothing but uh, stalkers. But we'll come in from the north here with reinforcements warped in and try to uh, pick off these stalkers or these roaches. We'll blink back, warp in some more DTs. Fortunately, he only has one overseer left, so we will try to focus that down. And once it is dead, all of my Templar in there are invisible. I have six Templar in there doing 60 damage a shot. That's going to make short work of any army, so he'll have to retreat and he is dripping back. As we're doing that, I am starting to get Colossus tech. I'll throw down a robotic support base soon. Probably another two robotics uh, facilities as well, so I can pump out three Colossus at a time. The thing is, you have to hit them hard and fast with a large number of Colossus when you do a tech swap like this. You can't just go for uh, one or two Colossus. You have to do a large number of them. The reason being, if you give him enough time, he will get Corruptors, and then you'll be in a normal state of the game when he has the counter to your Colossus. It takes him 100 seconds to make Corruptors, if, uh, to make the Spire. If you can keep your Colossus hidden and reveal all six at once, in that 100 second window, you have a huge window of opportunity to just kick the crap out of him. Because Colossus are amazing when they're not being countered by anything. And of course, we're continuing the research. We already have plus two, uh, plus three weapons. That's the most important upgrade. Makes your Dark Templar disgustingly powerful with 60 damage a shot. We are on even basis with the Zerg at this point. He is actually one ahead of me, but I will be expanding soon. I am disgustingly oversaturated here. I think I had all my probes rallied to it. I'm saturated here fairly well, so it's not really a problem per se. I should have more probes here. But this is a disgusting number of probes. This is ridiculous completely. But now I have three Colossus making at once. All I have to do is buy some time if he attacks. I'm going to wait until I have about six, two production cycles, and I'm going to push out and annihilate the hell out of him, because he's not going to expect it. And because I finally realized I have way too many probes, I will bring a couple down here, and I'll expand it here so I can saturate this base as well. I do probably have enough probes to fully saturate three bases. Let me check the income. I have 93 probes, which is a little high. You should uh, stop usually around 80. 80 is the magic number but 93 will not kill me. I've had some games where I go as high as 113 probes. That is very bad. Then you have no army. And here he is attacking me with roaches and overseers again. Again, this is a pretty scary army for just uh, stalkers and Dark Templar, but we have shown that I can handle it. I fortunately have Colossus out now, and he has no counter for that. So we'll have to uh, engage and force field, doing the uh, standard Protoss doom thing that the Zergs all whine about. And we'll force field him in here tightly grouped so he can't really escape my AoE from my Colossus. And I'll take some heavy damage to my army as well, but I can really afford losses because I have, I'm doing so much damage to his roaches with those Colossus. Now you can see he's throwing down a Panic Spire in his base. He's like, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, Colossus. By this point, I do have all six. This push now will be unstoppable no matter what he throws against me. He's not going to be able to stop six Colossus with a bunch of Blink Stalkers with Ground Force. You can't do it. It's not possible, sir. You have to have either Baneling Drops, Corruptors, something. There's no way you can stop Colossus, Mass Colossus, Stalker with Roach. But this is the advantage of a Protoss Tech Switch. If, uh, it's a little harder to pull off Tech Switch. It's a Protoss and a Zerg. And there he GG's out and the game continues. And someone else will go up to uh, Jump into Ops. But uh, yeah, that just illustrates the cool point of a Protoss tech switch. They are harder to pull off than tech switches with Zerg because you need 
a lot more production buildings. That's why you can't really pull off a Protoss tech switch until you're on two, uh, three or four bases at minimum because you need to throw up a bunch more production facilities and reveal it all at once. So you have to aff be able to afford to float like 2,000, 3,000 resources worth of units for a fairly long period of time while you're actually researching that. But if you do it and you pull it off and come out unexpected, Protoss units are extremely powerful and if the enemy isn't expecting it, you pretty much win the game. One of the main advantages of being Protoss, just pull out those crazy power units towards the end of the game and you win. Thanks for watching guys, hope you found it educational, or at least entertaining. And if not, screw you. I'll see you later. See you all later.